All right. So this War of Mine uh, was actually it's one of my favorite recent indie games. It's uh, it's made by a team in Eastern Europe, uh, many of whom have actually you know lived in war zones firsthand, and uh, and it, they just sort of had an interesting mission statement, which was to make a game that was about war, but it wasn't about sort of the glorious vision of war. It wasn't about the, you know, um, I'm a hero charging in, killing the bad guys, and saving the world. Uh, you know, showing the side of war that that it's easy to forget about. You know, it, that you know, I remember when I was young, um, and uh, I think the 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 first Gulf War uh, started. Um, you know, when I, when I was young, I was like, you know, like 11 years old or something. And it was, uh, maybe it was more like 13, I guess it was 13. And it seemed exciting that my country was going to war. Um, that was my first reaction to it. And I had to kind of be told by older, more mature people that, no, 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 a war happening somewhere is terrible for lots of people. Like, this is not an exciting thing. This isn't a thing you should be jazzed up about. You know, this is this is a serious deal. And I think that... There's a tendency, particularly you know, places like the United States where we haven't had a war on our own soil for a really long time, it's easy to forget what war actually means. You know, you know when you're going to war, it's not, it, it, you know, it might seem distant for you. It might seem like, you know, just something that's happening on television to you because you're far away. But to someone, it's their entire life falling apart. And you can't go to war lightly. When I hear, you know, when people react to world events sometimes by saying, you know, oh, we should we should attack, we should go to war. You should never be quick to make that decision um, because there's somebody whose life you're ruining when, whenever you say that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, Taylor. Um, so, anyway. So I, lo so I love this game. I appreciate this game. Not just because it's actually a, uh, a fun and interesting game, but also because uh, the message is really valuable. So this is This War of Mine... The Little Ones, which is the console version. I've, I haven't played it yet. I've only played it on uh, PC and iPad. Um, and so I don't know what involvement... Chil so so the, the whole point of this new version is that, aside from being on console, is that children are going to be involved. Now, there were child characters in, in the original game, but they were non-player characters who would show up, say a few things, and leave. Uh, apparently, they're actually somehow involved in the gameplay now. I don't know if I'm actually going to get to the point where they're involved... Uh, I mean, it looks like they're just starting me off with the tutorial uh, with the sort of initial group. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I am playing as Pavel. Okay, that's pretty pretty intuitive. So I, can, I, I assume I can give Pavel a job and then leave him. So let's say you work on that and then... Okay, yeah. Bumpers switch me to a different character. Uh, let's see, what, what, what are we capable of doing right here right now? Nothing. We got no resources. We can't build anything. So let's start unlocking some stuff. Uh, okay. Need a crowbar or something there. Oh, let's see what else we have. I guess we can get started on that too. Then Marco. Marco's slightly wounded. What? Okay, we're gonna have to get him something. Um, all right, yeah, grab all. We're gonna have to get him some bandages or something. So the very first thing you do is you, you've moved into this bombed out old house. You're squatting in it. Uh, you don't even know what's in there. You got it. So you got to go through it and and search and you know find find what you can find. And this sort of determines your 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 starting supplies. So some of these jobs take a really long time. You just basically just leave somebody queued up on the job for ages. Uh, but the thing that's interesting is you've got limited time. You see up at the top of the screen, um, there is a clock uh, that says, you know, it's, it's 9, 10 a.m., 9, 20 a.m. Um, and so I've only got until sunset to get to, to do what I can with my day. And so, the, so the fact that these jobs all take time is a pretty significant aspect of the game. Uh, it's a pretty significant cost. Uh, oh, okay, I have a lockpick. Cool. I could have conserved that lockpick, but uh, I'm trying to move fast. Okay, looks like... Guy's almost done. 
and I think yeah so that was only the one lockpick now I might be able to build a crowbar I think I might need to look at getting getting lined up with the right icon is kind of tough right now okay so what can I build the metal workshop is what I use to build tools uh, I think that would be a good idea to get one of those um, Bruno uh, he's, he's gonna need a wait you I thought wait I thought you could pull this stuff off but oh, you can okay good Marco doing? He's still working on that. Hey, Dark Flame. Good to see you. Yeah, grab all that stuff. So these resources, you feel like you're getting a lot up front, but you use them really quickly. And then th this game does a really great job of sort of over time taking away what little you have. Um, all right, so Marco, you can work on this. Bruno, so normally you control this with the mouse with key and keyboard or with uh, tapping things. No, no, don't have to. Oh. So you just, uh, okay, good. We can make a, a crowbar. So I get really used to the idea that it's just easy to make these actions happen because I'm clicking them or tapping them. But having to actually navigate them, navigate to them first is uh, kind of rough. Okay, so we're about to get the tools. Pavel's gonna finish the tools we need. Um, actually, let's see if, if there's another job I can get Bruno started with because we're gonna want we're gonna want a stove, for instance, if. Uh, if that's still available, yeah. We're definitely gonna want a stove. So let's, let's I always stick that in the kitchen. Seems reasonable, uh, not required. Okay, so now that Pavel has got us a crowbar, can they both use the crowbar at the same time? Looks like not. That would be kind of weird. I bet they could at one point and um, fixed a bug. Okay, so he's working on that. And pretty soon, I'm gonna get everybody working on a long-term task. It's getting pretty late though. These guys might not finish clearing this rubble. Uh, Bruno's Bruno's the best, our best cook. Let's see, do we actually have what it takes? I'd rather save up my food if I can. So I usually keep my guys at the edge of starvation uh, because that's the most efficient way to use food. Um, So I'm not going to feed them right now, uh, and I'll hope that I can pick up some vegetables later. Um, so I'll, I'm going to eat a little bit of soup while we're waiting for the time to take down. It is weird not to be able to just scan around and see everyone in the house having to like switch, switch between the guys. So I wonder, I think it's 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. I wonder if Marco's going to make it. Let's see. If, I wonder if I can finish my soup before Marco finishes clearing the rubble. That seems unlikely. Mm. Come on. Who's gonna win? Uh, Marco beat me. Well, let's see what he can get. Probably not much before. Oh, was it, was it eight? Maybe it's 8 p.m. I think, yeah, sunset might be 8 p.m. Not around here during the winter time, it's not. Oh, okay, so what? So we do have bandages. I wonder if I've got time to bandage Marco before. Wait, where are we? Where do we keep the bandages in this house? Oh, that, wait, that's. Oh, there they are. Okay, well, didn't have time to bandage Marco. Let's definitely, okay, so these guys are both in a bad way. They should sleep. Um, 
usually you gotta leave a guard. I'm going to take a wild guess that um, that no one's gonna rob us tonight. Uh, and I'm gonna leave our guys asleep. I might regret that, but let's see what happens. So abandoned cottage, huge amount of materials, some food versus this place. Huge amount of materials, lots of food. Lots of food, lots of meds. Oh, but this is a place where things aren't that bad over here, so I would be invading them with the war. That seems that seems not very nice. Hey, Arcanus, good to see you. Um, so I guess, yeah, I will prepare to hit the ruined villa. And let's bring a crowbar with us so we can get through doors and stuff. Uh, I think that's all we're going to bring. We're not expecting to trade with anybody. And Bruno does not have a very, uh, have a lot of room in his backpack, so... Um, we don't want to bring too much. Loading. So war is not a playground. So since you were fortunate to get in a fight, meet people hostile who are hostile towards you. So toggling, scavenging combat, cycling targets, and attacking. All right. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so this place is occupied, and these folks might not like me being here. So can I... Ah, alright. That's how I can control that. Oh wait, no, no, don't run to the exit. Oh, crap. I don't know how to be quiet yet. <laughs> So if somebody catches me in here, they probably won't be happy. Oh, whoa. Well, let's, that's actually a great bounty, but let's, um, let's save that until I'm on the way out. Probably good stuff in there, but yeah. Need to get around it. Uh, so Arcanus is asking about, you know, how are you liking the combination of photorealism and icons? Is it running into uncanny valley issues for you? Oh, you're talking about the fact that th these characters have basically photographs as their faces. Normally, I do have an issue with that. Normally, I'm I'm not a big fan of involving photorealistic pictures. By the way, I'm stealing right now, which will probably make my character feel guilty. Um, so that guy has left. And I cannot be quiet enough, it feels. Um, but here, because you're so far away from the characters at all times, um, it feels like it's not as big a deal. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not as worried about it as I usually would be. Um, all right, so normally I kind of don't care about cigarettes. I know that, like, you can make money off them and stuff, but yeah, they're just not that interesting to me. Fertilizer, it can be good for making food, so I'm, I mean, or for uh, catching food, because rats like to eat fertilizer for some reason. Because um, a red spot over there is a person. Um, so I gotta be careful. And things stack with themselves, and so sometimes you got to kind of be clever with how you, what what combination of things you pick up. Oh, something to hide. Yeah, I don't have a lot of. I don't have a lot of control over my speed right now. I feel like, I mean, st stick tilt is what kind of determines how fast I move. Um, and I, I feel like I keep doing things by accident, like bashing through a door or running. And, uh, yeah, they're looking for me now. Oh, crap. You know what? I'm just going to run. That would have been bad. That guy had, had uh, you know, 
ill intent for me. So I didn't really even find the food. But I came back with something. If I can make some rat traps, I could start getting food. You eat rats in this game, by the way. You can't eat people, so I won't be able to keep up with my tradition, but you do eat rats. Oh, great. So Marco's injured and sick. Nicely done. Okay, so let's... Um, we need beds. I just realized that I had everyone sleeping without beds, which is just stupid, so... Wow, I do not have a lot of stuff here, so let's usually put the beds upstairs, just because. Slept poorly, hungry, slightly sick. This guy's actually a good scavenger, and he moves quickly, so I should probably try to make him better. Uh, so let's give him some medicine. We'll let him sleep tonight. Um, and then basically if you give someone medicine and rest usually whatever's wrong with them will get better but it takes time and while that time is going on there's a lot less you want to do with the character I think you, if you strain them their, their stuff can get worse <laughs> like a bad is like why the crap are you stealing Jeff it's uh you know it's weird. I've kind of become a bad person as a result of playing this game. Um, I've, I've been into in, in so many situations where, um, where where stealing felt like the only way to survive that I kind of become inured to it, and I, I end up I end up just doing it uh, without thinking about it anymore. Which is, I don't know. I feel like that's that that may be part of the game's statement. Honestly, <laughs> is is watching yourself become more used to the idea of doing terrible things but there have you know I, I have been thinking of um, trying to challenge myself to get through the game without doing anything wrong uh, but it's really hard you know I mean I, I end up you know prioritizing winning the game over a adhering to a particular moral code and uh, that's it's it's you know the thing that's weird too is I tend to play, do, you know, Paragon playthroughs of, like, role-playing games. Like, if I'm, if I'm playing a game where you can have good choices and evil choices, but it's just an arbitrary storytelling choice, I pretty much always make the good choices. Um, but this game, it's not telling you, would you like to make a good choice or an evil choice? They're both the same. It's just different stories. But it's actually, like, saying, are you willing to make a terrible choice in order to survive? And when it's down to that, you know, I end up making the bad choice way more often. And that, that, might, that might say something about me. I mean, it might say something about my level of engagement with video games, where I, I tend to engage with them on a competitive level before engaging with them on a narrative level, which, you know, that, that could be part of it. Um, it might not say anything about me as an actual person in real life. It might say more about just how I am as a gamer. Um, but still, it says something. Uh, it says something that like a bat never steals from people, and I do. Uh, but and, and wondering what that says is it's, it's, it's an interesting part of this game. Um, so I cannot make a bed right now. Let's see, can I make an axe yet? I don't I think I might have to upgrade this before I can make an axe. Yeah, I can't make. I could probably couldn't make one anyway. Um, so I'm not doing too well resource wise. I've got one guy who's sleeping, so he can go out tomorrow. The other guys want to sleep but they don't but they only have one bed to share so you know they might not get better uh which is a bad move so like about i've never been able to engage like like at the military base i've never been able to engage the military and have anything good come from it uh i usually i do tend to take out bandits um, and, and you're right, you do get a lot out of that, but even then, I mean, the, the game does a really good job of, of scaling back your resources pretty aggressively, and there's, there's almost no amount of resources that, that feels like you've got enough, you know? Mm. So, those of you who are disappointed that I'm not engaging in any cannibalism can pretend this is human soup, um... I won't be doing that because that'll make me vomit, but, you know, whatever. Oh, man, have you guys ever seen... Oh, I can't remember the name of it now, so I'm not going to be able to actually tell you about it, but 
um, there was this short film I saw at one point about a little boy being cared for by a robot, and he kind of is a brat to the robot and breaks the robot's AI, and the robot ends up, like, murdering him and doing terrible things. Our discussions about cannibalism remind me of that movie a lot. It was one of the most horrifying, disturbing things I've ever seen. Well, like about, I just might not be as good at this game as you are. Um, I end up having a lot of um, failed resource runs and stuff like that, or getting characters killed. I end up sort of cheesing the... They, they do a weird thing, and at some point I should check and see if, if, if this is still the case. They do a weird thing with their save system. The game only saves, at least the previous versions. I don't know if the Xbox One version is this way. The previous versions, the game only saves when you're on your way into your house. That's the only time. So anything you do after that is not saved unless you complete another cycle and get and return to your house in the morning. But there are events that happen immediately upon your return home. That like you, you come in, you walk in the door, and immediately stuff happens. But the game is using like like the way that it's handling random number generation, if you quit and come back, you're basically safe scumming and a different thing will happen on your return. Which, you know, I mean, if a, play, if a game has a flaw where, you know, if you consciously exploit it, you can sort of save scum and make the right things happen, fine, you know, you can decide to use it or not to use it, but the fact that this game basically forces you to save scum, where there's no way to avoid it, like, you come home, something immediately happens, you say, okay, that was the time I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit this game now, when you come back, something different happens, like, there was no way to avoid that, there's no way you could have quit the game and not save scum. Um, so that that's a weird thing about the game that was that was it's kind of a it's a weakness that I feel like I don't know I don't I'm I'm not a programmer but I've you know I know that there are games that have solved that problem before so it kind of surprised me that it that it was an issue with this game. Um, let's see here. Yeah. I'm, <sighs> Oh man, Marco is in such bad shape. <laughs> okay, so I need to get more beds. So yeah, so let's have him sleep in the bed. Let's have him try to sleep again. I, I'm I'm really pushing my luck here, but we we need to scavenge. Um, let's not hit the ruined villa. Um, supermarket is probably good actually. Let's let's hit the supermarket. Um. I think there's enough stuff available without needing the crowbar. Maybe I should just, I should just, I'll just leave his hands open. Okay, good. It's this set. I was afraid that this was the uh, set where I was going to need to um, stop a, ra uh, a rapist. And... I wasn't certain if I was going to be able to pull that one off without a weapon. So I like these guys are saving, are, are, are sharing me. What is, what is this? Oh, it's a toy. It's ready for me to have children. And by have children, I mean have children be present in the story, not I give birth to children. Okay, so I've already picked up a bunch of stuff I don't need uh, right now. I need... Oh, wait. What I need is materials for building and upgrading stuff, specifically so I can make beds. Um, I don't need all of this stuff. So actually, let's let's put back some of the things I don't need right now. Um, I don't even need the toy. So, I mean, the toy is interesting. It's a new mechanic. Uh, so I'd love to see what it is, but I don't think I'm going to see it in the next, you know, half an hour. Anyway... Okay, that was good. This is working for me. Sugar can be great, by the way. For a long time, I didn't know what sugar was for um, until I figured out that found out that you could basically make alcohol with it. Uh, I've had you know settlements or whatever, whatever communities where the whole the whole way I survived was just making lots of booze and selling it for whatever I needed. Uh, just sort of a little, little moonshine community, which, which is great. Alright. 
Let's see what people are keeping on the roof of the supermarket. Grab all. So I'm still, let's see here. I'm still pretty shy on what I actually wanted. The only thing, I don't know if these guys actually gather things or, you know, if they're really taking things out of this place or if they're just pantomiming it. Uh, I've never been able to really determine if they, if there's, it doesn't look like they're taking anything away. It seems like I have full range of things that I'm gathering here. I get a lot of machinery here, but I really want, I need more fundamental stuff. Machinery is great, and I'll probably come back and get it, but I, what I really need right now is, is more basic supplies, so I can have a second bed. Until I have a second bed, just everything's going to be crap. So... Alright. Let's hit the basement. Weapon parts, those are useful. Stack those up, stack that up. I do like me some weapon parts, but I can come back tomorrow night. I got my eye on you. I've got my head showed up here. Oh, well. Oh, man, such useful things. Okay, I don't have any rat traps yet, so let's give this up and let's grab some drugs. Um, I kind of want to keep everything else, though. Did I already look here? Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Okay. Let's see if there's anything super fancy. Okay, so that's... If I had brought a crowbar, I could have opened that lock, but uh, I had other priorities this time through. Yeah, see, I don't know, I don't know if, if, if making the distilled alcohol, if that really breaks the in-game economy so much as accurately reflecting that there are certain people who just profit from being in a war. You know, I mean, I think that might actually just be a, a conscious part of what they're doing with this game. Showing that, you know, the effectiveness of profiteering. So that's about all I can carry. I think I'm probably good. So I'll head to the exit and eat some soup. Mmm, soup. Soup is not as hot as it used to be. Man, there's a lot of it in here. It looks like a small container, but... Mm. Yeah, like about some of the um, some of the advantages that people have in this game um, are kind of invisible. It took me a while to actually figure out that when, that Bruno being a good cook, like what that meant. Um, so let's put him to bed again. Though, well, actually, if we can, okay. So we've got all right. Marco's already in bed, and he just. Okay, these guys are getting better. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's um, let Marco sleep. Let's see if we can actually build a bed now. Do we have enough stuff? We do have enough stuff. Okay, so so having enough beds in your house to uh, deal with all of your tiredness issues each night is pretty important. So got that taken care of. Uh, I mean, three beds would be better, but it's not really. You usually don't need to cover everybody. Usually, you know, there's somebody who slept well last night who can stay up during the day, and it's fine. Um, I don't think I've got... Yeah, I really kind of wait... Uh, you know, the reason I was raiding those folks' house was because I thought they might have vegetables. And you can be a lot more efficient with your food if you um, are using your vegetables. 
So like about what what is it you like about uh, Marin and, and, and Katya? I know that um, Marco, I like Marco because he's got the huge backpack. Uh, he can carry home a lot of stuff. I forgot what Marin and Katya do. Um, but yeah, Bruno's useful for not using too many resources. Pavel's just a fast runner. Sometimes he's sort of... I often make him kind of my expendable guy. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll send him into dangerous situations because he's good at escaping. Oh, hey, there's a trade person. He's good at escaping. Um, and, oh, wait, uh, let, let's put Bruno to bed. Or Bruno. So, one thing, I think, I wonder if the time pressure economy is is pretty different in this game because I have to manually walk Mar Bruno up here to the bed and normally I would just say hey Bruno get in bed and then I'm done and he would just take care of the whole action himself but now I had to actually wait I couldn't be trading with Pavel while uh, while Bruno was was en route let's see what we got here These guys are offering me things uh, no vegetables unfortunately fuel Filters. I haven't built a water filter yet. Got a lot of this. Do I have anything that I don't care about? See, I'm probably not going to be making healing stuff for a while, so I, I kind of don't mind losing that. I can sell these, sell some books. Of course, well, let's not sell some books because books can be burned for fuel. Um, and yeah, I feel like fuel is pretty cheap to buy, uh, and you don't have to go through some of your, your valuable equipment to uh, create it if you buy it, so I kind of tend to buy firewood from people when I can. Okay. Um, give that back. And deal. Alright, so maybe we can maybe build. So sometimes I'll I'll be more strategic and I'll actually have an idea in mind of exactly what it is I want to build or upgrade. Um, at this particular moment, I'm not feeling that way. Okay, so I'll need a lot more to get the improved metal workshop. What what other options do I have here? Um, I can get the radio. So that'll warn me of things like when there's a cold snap coming or something. Um, I can start making water. Uh, there's, okay, there's the still. Ready to make moonshine. Rainwater collector I can do. It'll use all my stuff. And I'm not really even cooking yet. Um, but... Well, getting that going is probably pretty good. So let's... You can put the rainwater collector anywhere, but I tend to put it, you know, in the upper story because that makes way more sense to me than any of the other options. Um, so Marco and Bruno are sleeping. Pavel's going to be building something. You also like about it. Yeah, I am looking. I am looking to make an axe so that I can cut down all the armoires and stuff like that. Uh, he's saying don't burn books. I usually leave one book so that people can use it for morale type reasons. But I don't know if there's. Is there a reason to have lots of books? That is something you know for. The current uh, game that I'm working on. At one point, we did consider having a book burning uh, choice, just because it was so clever. When we saw it in this war, we're like, "What if we can do that? Can you bring home a, you know, can you like use books for fuel?" But uh, I don't think it's going to fit. I think that we, we've got doing too many other different things. Fuel means something very different in the franchise that I'm working on. So, all right, so. I don't have a filter, so I can't use this yet. Uh, what do I want to do now? I really don't have any crafting materials, so I'm probably going to go back to the supermarket. Um, or maybe, you know, that house had a bunch of materials. If Depending on how Marco's feeling, I, at some point I want to send Marco to that house to just rob them blind of all of their uh, parts and materials. Um, for now, though... Uh, so one thing I'm never clear on is whether these guys who are in the bed are going to get their full night's sleep if I... Okay, good. Well, he's, he's getting up anyway. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Stop going down those stairs. We are not going down the stairs. We are going up these stairs. Alright. So, we'll put Pavel to bed because he slept poorly. 
Oh, you've had enough sleep? Oh, never mind. Fine. All right, well, then might as well end the day. The night. All right, so Pavel, let's let you sleep in a bed. Actually, no. You guard. Um, or better yet, you guard. You scavenge, because you've got more room in your inventory. A sniper junction. Uh, small apartment building. I don't know how easily I can do but sniper junction with direct control of the characters. Lycobat suggests that uh, having the beds and the collectors uh, upstairs is a waste, that I should try to cluster everything on the middle floor so people can, can get to it faster, and I, I agree with him. That's probably the better the better uh, option. Um, I do that entirely for um, aesthetic reasons, because I think of bedrooms and water collectors being on the top floor, and so I put them there because I think it looks nice, and that's a stupid reason, but it's what I do. <laughs> so I can go back to the supermarket um, if I want to, I think, feel like the stuff that I need, though, can we find somewhere else? Like the, like the shelled school. I think maybe I'll be able, be able to find more materials there. So let's let's go to the shelled school. Um, let's leave a weapon. The only weapon I have is this crowbar. Um, I'm betting I can get enough stuff without getting through any doors right now. So let's leave the crowbar at home so they can defend themselves with it, and head out. But like about it, it sounds like you know exactly enough about this game to really enjoy it to the fullest. So I don't, I don't have any problem with uh, <laughs> the amount that you know and the advice that you're giving. Um, oh, I keep just smashing through doors by accident. It's really hard not to run. Kind of wish they had found another solution for dis distinguishing between running and sneaking. So I think this character might not jealously defend this place. As far as I know, that might actually even be rats. I don't even know if it's a person. I know I've, I've seen a person in here before. Okay, it is a rat, so. Okay, so that blockage, if I had a shovel, I could get through that blockage quickly, but I don't, so I won't. Oh, well. Okay, I guess I'm going through a blockage no matter what. So let's do that one. And we'll have some soup. Mmm, delicious soup. My control is vibrating. So I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't front load content with children. Um, that basically, as, as an old time player of the game who's bought it twice already, and now this is my third time buying it, I don't get to jump to the new experience of this game. I kind of have to play through the old stuff that's familiar. Um, I wish I wish that isn't wasn't how they'd set it up, because, yeah, I mean, I realize that most of the people playing this game right now are gonna be new audience, to people who may, may not have even ever heard of this war of mine because they get their games primarily through their Xbox, but so for a lot of people this will work just fine. But for me in particular, it's kind of disappointing. I think that if I died or quit this game and decided to start a new one, maybe I could jump into something. And actually, you know, what? after the scavenging run, maybe that's what I'll do. Um, I'll see if there's a way we can sort of look at. The breadth of content available. All right, so pull this off. So, like about the um, the main frustration I have with the port. Uh, well, well, first off, the the time the time use balance is worrying me a little bit. I mean, I haven't had a serious issue with it yet, but you know, you used to be able to really efficiently use your time by telling multiple people to do different things at once. And because I have to manually control my character, I mean, I don't see another way to do it uh, in this game uh, on a with a console controller, but the fact that I have to manually control my character eats into the time that my characters can spend. It eats into their efficiency. Um, so that is an issue. 
Um, oh wait, no, I don't need to do that. Yeah, I'll keep that too. Um, and also just, I don't have a lot of control over my speed. Like I keep accidentally running or I'll move into a door and I'll ram through it um, when I intended to do something else. Uh, and that can be pretty frustrating. I don't know why that giant pile is there. Uh, so I just got a question from like about saying you can't do that anymore. Ooh, that's a problem. I didn't actually understand which thing you were responding to. So, um, so when, when I say that I, um, that I can't control, if controlling my speed is what you're talking about, I can technically control my speed if I tilt the stick slightly and I, then I sneak. And if I tilt it all the way, then I run. Um, but it's just, it's difficult to control it. Um, it's, it's, you know, I find myself accidentally running a lot, um, just because of just normal sort of controller use habits. Um, oh yeah, oh, oh, so you were talking about the efficiency with people. You were talking about not, um, being able to say, okay, you go over here, you go over there. It's like, if someone's moving from one place to another, it's because you are manually controlling them to go do it. Um, you can't have two people moving at the same time. So you can walk one guy over to do an action and then switch the people, then walk another guy over to do another action. You can't just queue up, queue up the people and queue up the actions. But who knows? I, I haven't actually paid enough attention to figure out if... Um, it, it, it could easily be that they have also tuned the time to, to give you more time to work with. And if they did that, um, we're probably fine. Uh, you know, that might be just great. So, so I'm mostly here to just get baseline materials and stuff, so I'll just let him walk back with what I've got. I'll come back eventually to uh, grab the more interesting stuff. In theory, what I'm really going to do is quit and then see what my options are on the menu, which might destroy my save game, but we'll see. Pavel is back. So let's see what happens on the way. Let's see if we got robbed or something, because I want to do a test if we did. Plenty of really fine stuff. All right, the night was calm. So, oh, what is this? Oh, it's just, okay. I thought maybe I could control it, but it looks like not. Um, oh, your inventory can be a radial menu? That's interesting. Um, let me, uh, so can I do it right now? I think... Oh, look at that. Oh, holy crap. This isn't my inventory. This is the things I can do. Okay. You can more efficiently use your people. I was wrong. Because I could just send Pavel to bed right now. He'll go to bed. He'll walk all the way there. And I don't have to deal with it. Um, meanwhile, I've still never gotten any vegetables, which is too bad. Um, but we can make a couple meals here. Feed them to Bruno and Marco. Marco looks like he's recovered, which is good. Okay, well that, okay, great. That is nice. Um, so yeah, so like about talking about making your own scenarios, deciding whether you wanna like do a really cold wintry scenario or, you know, just basically kind of decide the challenges your people are gonna face, how long they have to survive, who you start with. Um, and says that you know, I, I saw that in the latest update to the base to the original game. I saw that that was a thing, and that was oh yeah. So it's, it's write your own stories right here. So you can sort of decide, you know, choose which people you want to start with. Say I want to have oh that's interesting. I want to have Marco, and I want to have Anton and Katya and Sveta, and I can make up a new civilian if I want to, give them a different name. Uh, change their portrait. You can actually um, import your own portrait um, in uh, on the, uh, the the PC version. 
and you can change what they look like here. So, oh yeah, so you can decide which map locations are here, which versions of, the, of them are here, and then you can, yeah, how harsh is the winter, how early does it come, how long is it, conflict, how many days, approximately. So that's pretty cool. And then if I pick another try, okay, so I've got these two right here that are unlocked. I can random as well if I want to. Um, the thing, yeah, that I really can't see is, is there going to be a way for me to jump into a, a situation where there are actually children um, to see how that, how that affects the process, how that affects the game? Uh, I don't know. Um... Yeah, I can imagine early winter is probably pretty brutal because it takes a lot of technological buildup to be ready. You know, you have to have a, have a heater, you have to you know, have a, an economy that allows you to get fuel regularly, and uh, yeah, having winter without that could just be miserable. Um, note, uh, I, should, I should actually point out real quick, um, in the bottom left corner that you can't see right now, these guys give uh, some of the, the money that they earn from the game to a charity called War Child. Which is about uh, uh, helping you know children in war zones and things like that, and, and I think that's uh, worth mentioning that you know these guys are. Um, this game has been, I, I think, probably pretty successful for the kind of game that it is, um, and but these guys aren't just just profiting from it themselves. They're actually really trying to turn around not not just send a message with the game, but also turn around some of the money that the game makes to uh, to to help with the problem that they're addressing, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so well, I guess I guess that's actually about it. I mean, I, I, I could I could try to play through another day, uh, but I'm really close to what I need to wrap up anyway. Um, so I think I might just uh, just uh, call it quits for the moment. But thank you all for being here.